morning friends it's Carolina Moore your favorite sewing and quilting youtuber and today we are doing some quilty science this has been a requested video by several of you and one that I've had actually in the works for quite a while because I wanted to know as well and that is of all the different gripping tools out there which one works the best on our rulers so in order to test this out I bought 11 different grippies this was pretty much all I could find on the market. If I missed one or two, I apologize. I did my best to get like a good variety and really everything that I could find. Um, I have four different kinds of dots, three different kinds of strips, two that were specific to long arm rulers because I don't know, maybe that's different. And then two all overs, um, a film and a spray that go over the entire ruler. So this kind of runs the gamut of what's out there for adding grippy to your rulers. I have two different kinds of rulers that I'm going to try this on. I got a really expensive ruler because I don't know if this is going to damage a ruler. So I bought a dozen of these inexpensive rulers that just have printing on the back. And then I have a dozen of my glow rulers because I want to see how those dots are going to affect the visibility of the glow um, and the strips and the sprays and all of that. I want to see if how they'll impact the use of the glow ruler. Now don't you worry, I'm not potentially ruining or damaging a dozen glow rulers. These are all mistakes that were made in production. There's errors on each of these, so these would never go for sale. I have not taken glow rulers off the market to make this video, I promise. And then I also have a uh, Creative Grids ruler, same size, six and a half inch Creative Grids ruler. Um, to use as a control. We're going to comparing these on my tabletop and then I have two different kinds of cutting surfaces that we will put these on and lean them up to see how much they slide and that's going to be our um, mostly scientific <laughs> experiment to try out all these different grippies. So you ready? Let's get started. Okay, so I have all my different grippies. We're gonna start with, um, I have the Quilt in a Day Grip Dots, the Steady Betty Betty Bits, the Gypsy Quilter No Slip Grip Dots, and the True Grips. And we're gonna start with those four on our different sets. I've just used a permanent pen to mark all the rulers so I can keep everything straight, hopefully. Um, coming up will be the Cut Right Handy Grabber, the Ruler grip the ten ruler grippers by Pam Demour Demour D A M O U R. Um, the grid lines for quilting grip strips, the best non-slip solution. Um, under long arm, I have the Handy Grip by Handy Quilter, and I have the Dritz long arm discs. So this is actually a strip and a dot, but both designed for long arm. And then in the category of entire surface, I have the Odif Grippy Non-Slip Coating and the Invisigrip Film. So we're going to try all of these on both our rulers and see what we like and what we don't. And at the end, we'll at least have some more information, right? We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I already started a little bit here with the Quilt in a Day Grip Dots. I'll open this up so that you can see what I have going on here. These are little squares, the like grippy adhesive that peel right off. And I went ahead and put them on already. Can we get a good angle? There we go. So three, two, and then three. Um, and then I did the same on here. And the fact that these are hard to see on here is good. So it's one, two, three, one, two, and then one, two, three. So for being able to see right through them, these look great. They do light up, you can see a little bit with the glow ruler, but nothing super obnoxious. Um, and they're definitely grippy. If we compare to a grippy so they definitely stick down so that's good 
Um, and then we'll do our comparison test with all of these back to back in just a second. So, so far, these look great. Um, and then they're also, we're going to be comparing price points as well. So I'll have the price points for all of these down in the description. Um, be aware though that price points can change. So just because it's one price today, if you're watching this five years from now, odds are things are going to be more expensive because inflation is just a fact of life. Okay, so these I already started pulling apart because they were a little bit tough to play with. So these are the Steady Betty, Betty Bits, um, Problem, Slippery Ruler, or Template, Solution, Betty Bits. They're designed to compress completely flat for a perfect cut, and when you press down on your ruler or template, it will hold for a professional and accurate cut. So these get stuck to the back of your rulers. It says, push bits out, of, out and peel away the paper backing, leaving the adhesive on the bit. See diagram for placement suggestions. Place on the back of your ruler or template and press down very firmly several times to make sure the bit is in place. As you use your rulers, the bits will get flatter, and this is what you want. They will continue to grip with use. Note, cut the excess into pieces and use them as well. Remember, you only need a small amount. Okay, so these are the Betty bits. And when we try to pop these out, they're a little stuck, I guess. And they make these little strings. So I don't know how much you care about that. I ended up grabbing my little um, thread snips and snipping off the two. It's just two little spots where they're connected. Also, if you don't like the feel of foam or styrofoam, these are not going to be for you, but we'll see how they work. Um, I'm going to use the same number of Betty bits as I did quilt in a day dots just to keep everything um, fair and equal. Now, I find it interesting that they say that you can cut up the rest of this however you want. Personally, I would love for this to be covered in dots. So I wish that they would have cut circles in between here already for me so that I didn't have to go cutting that up myself. Um, and I don't know, I mean, it might've been nice if these would have already been punched and loose in the bag. But um, I mean, this does give you a ton of um, use because you can, you can use the whole thing. Maybe I should put that one above there. That's okay. All right, so I put six along the edges and two in the middle. And then I'm going to do the same on my glow ruler. And I'm going to keep it off of the lines because that's what I would do in not just experimental. So here, I'll turn on the glow ruler so you can see. I want it between the lines because if this ends up being a superior product, then we definitely want to be able to use it to its best advantage, which would be um, putting it between the lines because it's not, it's, uh, it's not a transparent product. So that'll adjust a little bit the way that we use it on here, but that's okay. Okay, so I have my, and it said push down a couple times to make sure that they are really on there. Let me flip this one over, do the same on this. And definitely on this clear glow ruler, you can see for sure Okay, so these white dots actually light up a little bit under the glow. You can see a little bit that adhesive definitely attracts the light. And now if we compare, it definitely stays put, definitely stays put. Without pressure, I can still move them. With pressure, they stay put, okay. So, so far these are great. Um, we're going to 
move these over and work on our no slip grip dots by the Gypsy Quilter. So these say adhesive rings perfect for quilting rulers, templates, and fabric. Oh, you can put them on fabric? Huh. I guess so. So some of them stuck to this backer, but I think that's fine, and I'll just use those ones first. It again didn't tell me how many to put on, so I'm just going to do this the same way that I did with the um, Quilt in a Day, where I'll put six in the corners, or I get six along the edge and then two in the middle. And then I do like that these ones have holes. The hole is too small though for the hole in the ruler. So, I mean, I can try to put it around that hole in the ruler, but it will still show. Now it's interesting, both these circle dots and the quilt in a day square shape dots have a center cutout. So this one is like a donut shape with little donut holes. So you can use your donut holes on smaller rulers or in different spots on the ruler to get different grip, or you could use the entire circle. In, I've done it both ways in different spots. Um, I suppose my science isn't an exact. I could have made templates just to make sure that all these dots are put in the exact same spots on all the rulers. But mostly we're just trying to get a feel for what grip is good grip. There we go. Alright, so these are the Gypsy Quilter No Slip Grip Dots. Push those down, push those down. These definitely light up with the glow ruler, but not distractedly so. When I compare, oh, these are actually pretty, oh, because I pushed down on that. Okay, once I lift it up, they move okay, yeah. Doesn't move too bad without pressure, but with pressure. They definitely stay put. And these ones actually seem to stick a little more to my flat surface. All right, so they definitely work. They get to move on to the next round. Okay, so now we have our true grips. It says perfect for any ruler, quilting, scrapbooking, fabrics. Lock it down. They're clear, they're scratch free. Um, ultra thin, safer, easier. Okay, so these out. Comes with a little brochure about their cutting system. And then we have the grips themselves. Alright, let's bring our rulers over, flip them over, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't have quite enough to do the same number on each. So I'll do eight on here and um, only seven on this one because this ruler is a little bit smaller. Um, so there are less in a pack for the true grips. But they peel up nicely. I still have a lot of the individual dots that I could use as well because these have those donuts. Okay, so also super clear. Let's see how they glow. These ones also have a bit of glow. If I do my comparison. They're staying put, so 
they definitely do the job. Okay, so let's compare the glow on these, the different, and the transparency. So in order that I show them to you, we've got our Quilt in a Day, Steady Betty, Gypsy Quilter, and True Cut True Grips. And let's see which ones glow the most versus the least. Um, it looks about the same to me. I mean, I guess the True Grips is, or the Steady Betty is a little bit less because they're smaller. They're not transparent, so you have to be careful where you put them, but there isn't as much like light caught on them. I mean, all of them work as grippers on this surface. Um, so then we're going to look at how much they slip on our slippy surface. All right, now that we have the dots on all four, we're going to see how well they slip on the slippy surfaces. And then we're gonna move on to other products so that we can compare those other products to all these different grippy dots versions. So I have my cutting mat on, this is just an Ikea lid, so that we can see how quickly it slips. All right, we're gonna start with our control, which is the Creative Grids ruler that has the built-in grippy, and see about how tall this is before it starts to slip. And then we're gonna do this on the Big Mac's cutting surface and see how tall it is before it starts to slip. Ooh, it actually is a little better on this big mat surface than on the regular mat. So now we're going to start with the first, which is the quilt in a day grip drop. The quilt in a day grip dots. And see how far. All right, it passed our control. And it's starting to slip. So that is quite a bit of grip on the grip dots. We'll do it on, this is the big mat's cutting surface. It's starting to slip there, you can see. So that's quite a bit of grip. Let's see if it's any different with the glow ruler. We'll put the glow ruler and all right, they're not, they don't both quite fit he on here, but we're going to try. To see if it's the start slipping at the same point. Oh, the glow ruler actually started slipping a little sooner, but then stopped. And I wonder if it's the weight of that metal strip. And now they're both slipping. Okay. So that was the grip dots from Quilt in a Day. We're going to try Steady Betty. It started slipping faster, but at about the same height. I'll try it on the other mat. Also fantastic. Let's try Steady Betty with the glow ruler. And I am putting the glow ruler with the metal strip closest to me. I feel like it is a heavier ruler so it slips more but that could actually make it better for grip on a mat because on a mat you're pressing down so maybe the weight would be better but I don't know and these are the tests that we're trying. Feel free to give me your comments. Now this is interesting as I'm grabbing this gypsy quilter is that they're sticking to one another. And I have that with the true cuts as well, where as I'm lifting it up, they're kind of stuck to one another. Your rulers kind of stick together. 
So these are more sticky top and bottom where they're sticking to one another. I have that with the Gypsy Quilter one too. Um, and then the Steady Betty one I don't because it's like a foam on the bottom. And then for the quilt and the day grip dots, let's see if I get that as well. Um, I do, it's a little less, but I still do get some. No, it's about the same. I think that it was experienced more on these ones than on the quilt and the day grip dots because this was on the top of the pile and these had things piled on top. And so with weight, they're going to stick more to one another. Okay. Let's do our gypsy quilter test. I'm gonna start with the mat. Oh, and it's starting to slip there. And then we'll switch to our Big mats mat. It's starting to slip a little bit now. So that one works great. And then we have our true cut, true grips. Pretty darn grippy. And then on the big mats cutting mat. Ooh. Still pretty darn grippy. So when I'm looking at just the four that we've done so far, which are all the adhesive dots based grippers, I would rate them all roughly the same um the um which one is it the one that it's there we go not quilt the day the steady betty so the steady betty you can't see through as well but it has it doesn't the rulers don't stick together which i kind of like um but you can't see through them so it's like six is there um but the others all performed about the same um, so at that point, it'd probably be like a, a price slash availability comparison. Um, but we're going to keep going. We're going to move on to the grip strips. So let's start putting those on our rulers and uh, seeing what we like and don't like about those. Okay, we have our three strip based contenders. These are the ruler grippers by Pam Demour. I'm going to pick one way and say it, maybe. Um, the Cut Right Handy Grabbers and the guidelines grip strips so we are going to start at the top work our way down as we um, attach all of these to our rulers and see what that experience of putting them on is like so we're going to start here we have these um it says these five inch by three quarter inch texturized adhesive strips gives your rulers more grip more of a grip on fabrics and makes them less likely to slip okay there are no other instructions on here so um i don't know do i put one on each side do i put them all the way around do i do side side middle let's see how many strips i have so i've got enough for both rulers All right. All right, these feel like kind of sandpapery. So I've got one. Should we do one, two, three? That feels right. One, two, three on each. And oh, there's 10 in the pack. It says it on there. So we're going to um, just use 
six of the ten, so I'd have four left. And then I'm going to tuck everything else back in here with this to remind me of what it is. And I like that it's a little zippered pouch so that, or a zip top bag. Okay, so we're gonna flip these over. And start by applying two. So I'm trying to peel off this backing. There we go. Oh, I didn't get a clean peel there. Don't know if that's the product or just the way that I was trying to peel it. I don't know if I was supposed to cut these up into pieces or use an entire thing. I'm just with each one of these going on what's in the packaging. Oh, that one peeled beautifully. Um, and just going from there. I'm sure that there are more instructions and I may even be using one of these products wrong. Um, if I were to do more research on these products, it's very possible, but um, just to give everything an equal playing field, I'm just using the information that's on each package. All right, so I'm gonna do the same on the glow ruler. Yep, I keep getting that little bit of paper that gets stuck. Okay, so I have it all on the rulers. Let's see how much this... Okay, any areas where it's really pressed down, you can really see that glow. So let me... It's a little hard to press it down because I can't run my fingers smooth across it because the, the grippy is like a sandpapery. I don't know if that'll make a difference. Yep, you can really see the glow. I mean, it's not a huge interference. Let's look at on the lines of a mat. So here's the lines of a mat. That feels a lot more a lot less transparent once I put it on a mat like that. Hmm. Okay. Um, my other concern about the glow ruler and these strips is that um, if you grab your glow rulers and stack them with one another, because this grippy has kind of a sandpaper quality, will the rulers rubbing up against each other um, scrape up your rulers. So there I was a little hard here. I'm just barely touching it. Um, and <laughs> it's a good thing this ruler was not going to be for sale anyway, because it is definitely, um, scratched up from that. So you can see where I pressed hard and then here I can feel it. I don't know how well can see it against the light, but I definitely see the scratches and the scratches do light up from the ruler. Let's do our comparison of how well they, I mean, they definitely hold on this slick surface of the table. So they work for sure. Okay. So that's that product. Now let's go ahead and add, we're doing the cut right handy grabber. And I'm gonna grab these. This one has, let's see, this says, keeps your rulers and templates securely in place. Includes two two inch by seven and a half pieces, cut into strips, dots, any shape you want. Ultra thin and durable, special coating, grips tight. No more miscuts. And the directions are cut with paper or ordinary scissors to desired size and shape. It is not recommended to use your sewing or expensive scissors to cut. I love that. Peel paper back from sh peel paper from back of shape and press onto template. Shapes may be removed from the template at a later date, but they are not intended for reuse or reapplication. 
after removal, some resi residual adhesive may remain on template. Use a soft cloth or paper towel with rubbing alcohol to remove. Okay. So let me grab some non-fabric scissors. All right, these came from my desk. So we can cut these into strips or whatever shape we like, I suppose. This feels pretty similar to that other, the Pam Demore product. All right, I'm cutting these into somewhere between half inch and three quarter inch. I think I'll do five per. Five. Okay. And they also, they definitely have this sandpapery or feel. So I'm going to take my extras and put them back in the package. So I already have these flipped over and I'm going to peel this back. I honestly wish I'd like peeled it first and then cut it. I don't know if that would have messed up my scissors. Oh, this one looks more clear than the Pam product. Just putting it on. When I turn it on, I really get the same effect here, wherever it's pressed down on the ruler, it does catch that glow. More so here, closer to the lights. And then the other question that I had, and I didn't save myself a piece of this, but we had that scratching with the Pam product. If I press hard, Oh, I absolutely get scratching. And then light, I get some again as well. It's about the same. Um, it's really similar. If you look at how transparent the product is. Now that I have it on the mat, it actually looks about the same in terms of transparency. So they look like they're a really similar product. And then let's do our comparison of how grippy is it. It definitely grips. Okay. So now we have our guidelines for quilting, quilt ruler, and template grip strips. The best non-slip solution for your rulers and templates. No more finger walking down your ruler as you cut. Crystal clear, practically invisible. But when cutting, the pressure gets concentrated on the edges and locks your ruler in place. Make little adjustments with ease. Grip strips slide easily over your fabric when lining up. And these ones are patented. They have a patent. Okay. Contains six 11 and 3 quarters inch crystal clear grip strips, enough to slip proof both your 12 inch and 24 inch long rulers. Just peel and stick. No sticky residue. They attach securely, but can easily be removed and or repositioned, leaving no sticky residue. Get more for all your rulers and templates can be cut into any length and work on curved edges. Blue lines indicate crystal clear grip strips. So on all these images, they're showing it around the edges. So around all four edges of the ruler. So that's what we're going to do. pull this out and let's see if there's, oh, there are instructions here. Oh, it's nicely taped in. Okay. So what does it say? This says attach one right along the edge, each edge of your 12 inch or 12 and a half inch ruler, start in the middle and attach two along each edge of the 24, 24 half, um, if needed. And oh, it says attach to all four edges of the squares. So let me move those out of the way. So I have squares and so I need to put it on all four edges of my squares. Let's see. So I just peel off a strip of this and put it right along the edge. and then I'm going to center it along this edge. I like that for this ruler that has so much ink on it, these grip strips are completely hidden. You can't even tell that they're there because they're hiding in that ink. 
However, this is a very heavily inked ruler, so most rulers wouldn't really have this much print on them. So it took me two grip strips to do a six and a half inch ruler, the square, because I did all four sides. And I'll do the same on the back of the glow ruler. I'm interested to see how much this one lights up when it glows. Oh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the full top and then center on the side. All right. I'm pressing it down. This one does feel a bit thicker than the others. So I wonder how that is when trying to cut accurately. Um, it slips when I've got no pressure on there. But once I have pressure on there, yeah, let's do a comparison. Okay. And then let's do our glow test. Ooh, of all of them, this is the least amount of glow that I've seen from any of these strips. However, because of the height, there is a shadowing behind the ruler. Um, so you've got your light and then you've got the shadow. So you'd have to remember that you're gonna ignore that shadow line and just do the glow line when you're cutting because that shadow line is not your measuring line. But of all of them that I've put on the glow ruler, this looks the cleanest in terms of being able to see what you're doing. Okay, so I did stack up my rulers, which makes me a little nervous for um, hopefully not scratching any of my rulers. I need to be a little careful about that. So I'm going to start with, this is the Pam Demour. Put it up at the top. There we go. That's really grippy. That's really good. All right, we'll try it on the other surface. This is the Big Mats cutting surface. Bring it all the way to the top. A little less grippy on this surface, but this is a slicker surface. This is the cut right. is pretty grippy. And now we're going to try it on the Big Mats cutting surface, which is that slicker surface. Yep, it is definitely slicker on there. We're going to try the guidelines. All right, that one has moved the most easily but I'm not necessarily upset about that because it means it will slide smoothly on fabric when there's no pressure. Because it really didn't move much once you put pressure on the ruler. Yep, this is one of the most slick, or the most moving of all the ones we tried. So next up, we're gonna try the two grippies that are designed to be used with long arm rulers. Now, long arm rulers usually sit on the long arm so on top of the quilt and are used with quilting so they're not on hard surfaces like we're using here so we're definitely doing like an off-label use by putting these on rulers on hard surfaces if these don't perform as good as anything else it, it's no reflection on these products because i'm not using them the way that they were intended so i just want to put that out there as a fair warning before i open these up and try them out um but sometimes you find an off-label use for something that's amazing so they might be the perfect tool we're just gonna go with it and find out all right first up we have the handy grip this looks like some of those other sandpapery ish options that we've already tried so we're going to flip these over. It says 12 strips that are 1 inch by 5 inches for use on any ruler or template. 
accurate tools for long arm quilting. So again, this is long arm specific. So let's look at the instructions. Apply handy grip to the back of your favorite ruler or template to keep it positioned correctly. It still works with all rotary and crafting rulers. Okay, so while this, it says that it is good for all kinds of rulers. Make sure that your ruler or template has a clean surface by removing any dirt or oil. Okay, so this one is asking us to clean it, so we will. Turn handy grip to any length, shape, or size, or trim, sorry, trim handy grip to any length, shape, or size needed for your ruler or template. Remove adhesive backing before applying handy grip to the ruler or template. Stacking rulers and templates with handy grip will lead to scratching. Okay, so I like that they are upfront about that with this product. Um, visit handyquilter.com to find other great quilting products. Okay, so it says that you can cut this up. So we will, let's see, one, all right, I have that all secured, so we'll flip them over, and yep, just like the other ones. Now you can cut these so that they sit between the lines, so I mean, I like that. Um, if we do our comparison of, they definitely keep everything in place. So good. Um, you absolutely can cut these to go between your lines so that you can um, not have it interfere with your ability to see the lines on the ruler. So that's good as well. Um, yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. Now we're going to try the Dritz. Grip discs. Dritz script discs. Try to say that three times fast. Dritz drit script discs. These are another little donut. Ooh, oh, look. Hmm, interesting. This one comes in two sizes. A big and a small. So that, I like that. That's great for different um, sizes. Oh, I should, I suppose, read the instructions. Um, Non-slip adhesive circles applied to back of rulers, stencils, or templates. Two convenient sizes for even the smallest ruler. Prevents slipping, easy to use, transparent color. And then it has instructions in multiple languages. All right, let's see if we can peel these up. So these big ones are like the big donuts that we're used to seeing already. And then there are these little ones. Oh, hmm. That's interesting. I don't know if I got a defective sheet here, but, oh, it does, it, the punch was so small. It looked like the punch didn't go all the way through, but it did. All right, we'll do four middle, little ones in the middle. So I did four big ones around the outside and four little ones in the middle. Okay, I've put those on. They don't look quite as transparent as some of the other ones. These ones look like they've got a little bit of yellowing. I don't know that that's a big deal. I don't know if that's just over age and time. And the other ones are yellow as well. Also totally possible. But, I mean, if I compare. Our movement. They definitely don't move. So that's good. They all work. So now we're going to try our test to see how well they hold against the mat. This is the handy grip. That's pretty good. And then if I try it with the other mat surface. Again, that's pretty good. Let's try the Dritz Grip Discs. Dritz Grip Discs. Dritz Grip Discs. It's just so hard to say. 
Okay, there we go. And now it's starting to slide. So that's pretty darn grippy. We'll try it on the other mat. It's super grippy on this mat. So those are the two grippy products that are marketed towards long arm quilters, one being the more sandpapery type and one being the grippy donuts. Um, really the results are super similar to what we saw with the other grippy um, sandpapery and grippy donut types. Not a lot of difference even though it's marketed towards long armors. Um, so they'd be pretty comparable to what we've already seen. But next up, we are going to be doing the two all overs. And I saved these for last because I knew they would take a little more time for me to mess with. And also, um, I'm really intrigued with how these are going to interact with the glow ruler. All right, so we have our Invisi Grip and our Odif Grippy Non Slip Coating. So let's start with the Grippy Non Slip Coating and read the instructions. Let's see, it says wood, carpet, glass, paper, plastic. Shake well, spray a thin layer from eight inches away. Grippy is slightly white and becomes translucent while drying. After one minute of drying, the non-slip ruler is ready for use. Tip, the thinner the layer, the more the product is transparent. For, non, for more non-slip effect, apply a second coat. Grippy can be removed with Odif DK5 cleaner. Oh, okay, so it'll they have a cleaner that takes it off. That's nice. Um, contains, and then it has the instructions. Uh, there's a danger warning, which we didn't have with any of the other products. Extremely flammable, can cause a flash fire, contents under pressure. Um, explosion could result causing serious bodily harm. Um, yeah, that's a, a, a danger for sure. Avoid prolonged breathing of vapors, provide adequate ventilation, fresh air movement to keep vapor concentrations below OSHA recommended exposure limits. Um, so there's a lot, do not puncture, do not incinerate, do not store temperature, high temperatures, do not smoke, um, never use in confined areas or areas with little to no air movement, keep out of reach of children. So this is definitely um, a more intense, I'm going to grab a box lid that we're going to use to spray this so I don't get it all over my table. Okay, I shook that up for about two minutes. And I said eight inches away, slightly white, becomes translucent. After one minute, it's ready for use. Ooh, that's a big cloud of spray. And I'm going to give myself a shirt mask here as I spray the other one just because that is a, I don't know how well you can see that on camera. It's a really big cloud of vapor. So I would recommend actually doing this outside rather than inside. Um, and I barely see any on here. So I'm going to do one more layer on both real quick. And it has like a nail polish kind of smell to it as well. So it doesn't smell great. Um, we'll see how well it works. Because so far it might not be my favorite in terms of application, but maybe it works great and it's just worth it to go outside to do it. Whew. Okay, in addition to having a bit of a smell, let's see how up against this dark cardboard Hopefully you can see and there's, so you can see, um, the transparency difference. So it's definitely got a film of something on there. It's not as clear to look through as, um, this, it says that it would go transparent in a minute. Um, I'm not seeing that. And also it doesn't Feel, it doesn't feel sticky to me. So it might be grippy, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have like a sticky, like when you spray 
adhesive for batting, for basting your batting. It doesn't have that kind of um, feel. And it looks like, so you can see, um, let's do it with, bring this up closer. So you can definitely see that color difference. And then it's definitely uneven. You can see here a little dot, something funky on there. So um, let's do the grippy test like we have with everything else. So control. So it definitely grips. Like they, they definitely stay put. So it, it works. There's no question there that it works. Um, we're going to set these aside. We'll do our slide test in a moment and let's grab our Invisigrip film. I've also heard a lot of things about this and I've never tried it before. So we're going to open this up. Okay. Instructions. Unroll Invisigrip onto your rotary cutting mat with Invisigrip facing up. Position ruler over Invisigrip and rotary cut approximately one quarter inch smaller than the size of your ruler. Peel off paper backing and apply Invisigrip to the underside of your ruler and press out any wrinkles for a smooth surface. And then the instructions are in two other languages. Prevents rulers from slipping when rotary cutting a clear non-slip material that is applied to rulers, cutting mats, and templates. Rotary cut with ease and confidence. Okay. So let's grab a rotary mat and the Invisigrip said put it Invisigrip, oh, Invisigrip facing up and it says about a quarter inch smaller. So I've got a six inch ruler and a six and a half inch ruler. So we're going to turn the ruler over. And oh, it's a, it's not sticky. It's like a cling film, like you put on a window. So there's nothing sticky about it here. It's like static cling film. So I want this about an eighth of an inch in. Oh, this is really easy to apply. Um, it is going over the hole there, so I would have to re, um, I'd have to re-punch that hole. Not a big deal, but just something that I'd have to know. That goes on really nice, really clear. I have some places where I've picked up some dirt or something, so I'm able to just peel it back remove the dirt or lump, whatever, lint that's under there. That went on really well. I like that. All right, let's put it on the glow ruler. Now this ruler has etched lines, and so I can feel some of those etched lines kind of coming through. It's not perfectly smooth on the back, I guess. I could kind of feel the inked lines on the back of this, but not as much as I'm feeling the etched on the back of this. I don't know how much of a difference that'll make, but we'll see. And then I didn't, with the ODIF, check the glow. So we're going to check the glow on both in a second. Let's grab our control units and say So I get a little bit of movement, but not it's not bad. It's when you've pressure you're fine and when you don't, it glides smoothly. All right, let's check the glow. Um, the glow on this one is just foggy. 
I don't know how well you can see that if we compare it to one that wasn't sprayed. You can just see that it's it's it definitely is catching that light. It's like a light fogginess. Um, it's not terrible, but I do like the crystal clear better. Um, okay, so we've got that, and then oh, the Ingr Invisigrip. I I think this is my winner here. I it's really nice. It's really clear. It's flush. Um, I, I was not expecting that, but that looks super clear. I'll bring it up so you can see. Um, that that looks perfect. So I think I found my winner there. I it didn't mean for it to be the last one. This wasn't trying to build up to any kind of climax or anything, but um, I do like the way that worked. But now we still have to do our our hill test to see how it slides down our angle. All right, we're going to do the Odif first. I mean, not terrible, not super grippy, but again, um, if it slides when it's you want it to slide, that's not a bad thing, um, as long as it doesn't slide when you're pushing on it. Let's try this Invisigrip. I'd say that's like a medium result. It's not the strongest. It's not the weakest. Um, also not terrible. Um, but uh, there you go. <laughs> so I tried 11 different grippies to see what would work, what I would love, what I wouldn't love. Um, and uh, I think I came out with a winner. I think at the end, this is the winner. The winner is the Invisigrip. Um, I think it went on easy, it comes off easy, it doesn't leave any sticky adhesive because it's a static film. Um, it the, looks beautiful with the glow ruler. Um, I think it'll actually protect your glow ruler from scratches, so that's, that's great as well. Um, the only downside would be on rulers that have a hole in them is that you need to cut that hole out um, separately, which isn't a huge deal. And for the glow ruler specifically, it doesn't have a hole in it because the that would interfere with the light so there's no impact with the glow ruler so there you go that is my winner of which grippy i would use for the glow rulers um there definitely of course is a cost component with all of these as well um, i'll have links to everything below so you can compare those the, the different donuts all performed really well as well i like those probably my least favorite is the odif just because of the smell and the the having to put it on, um, like the process of putting it on, and then the sandpapery ones come after that because of any scratching of my rulers, because I don't like my rulers getting scratched up. Um, but Invisigrip first, uh, donuts, all the little donut versions second. Um, yeah, I think that's where I landed. Let me know in the comments if there are groupies that I missed, if you have different opinions, because you saw the tests, I showed them as I did them in real time. Um, and you may have different opinions based on your own experiences with these products or things that you saw as I did them that you say, mm, no, like this is how I feel about it. And that's totally valid. It's one of the really cool things about quilting is that you and I can both be quilters and both love what we do and use similar but completely different products and both have a great time. So it's totally okay if you don't agree with my conclusions um, on these experiments because at the end of the day, this is going to be personal preference and what you're comfortable using. So even if you don't go with the ones that I prefer based on this experiment, um, if you learn something and now know what you do want and what you do prefer, that's still a win. Totally fine. Friends, that's it for today. But if you're not subscribed, um, please subscribe. These videos take a little bit of time and course buying all these things takes a little bit of money so I would love it if you subscribed and supported this channel give this video a thumbs up um, definitely thumbs up and share it with other people who you think might be interested in uh, 11 different kinds of grippy on rulers and how they work and interact um, and uh, all those questions comments leave them there's a comment section and that's exactly what it's for so go ahead and chat with one another chat with me down in the comment section friends that is it for today I'll see you right here real soon.
Bye for now.